Sergio, Sergio, you're back again. I've suckered you into it, but we love talking about Nakamura. And I know this MX100 right here, you like to believe it says M for methods, X for experience. This is the methods <laughs> experience. And not only yes. that, we have a bunch of parts on the table <laughs> because we're so familiar with how this technology works. Flexibility, reliability, yes. precision, accuracy, all those abilities that we have, we wanted to show off some of these parts, right? Oh, absolutely. So it, again, we. We talked about the MX100 being a very flexible machine, and if you look at just a sample of parts, what we, what we're able to to make on the on the MX, um, a lot of different configuration parts. So what are we looking at here? When we say difficult configurations from my side, that's easy to tell, right? Yeah. Like I'm seeing, I mean, angles and and holes and places that aren't supposed to have it. I'm seeing. Uh, a piece here that's just so thin wall, yes, right? Yes. And most of these pieces I'm looking at on the table, I would make the conversation, because I don't like to argue, you know how people say, I would argue. <laughs> I would make the conversation that most of these are gonna be done on multiple machines. Oh, absolutely. Whereas we're knocking it out in one process, aren't we? Absolutely, so a lot of times we, you know, the way the process works, we get customer drawings and information from the customer and how they currently make the part and then a lot of times you see them making parts like this in five, six different setups, right? So you go from machine to machine to machine to machine. It takes a long time to set up not just one machine, but five different machines. And you have to build a work in progress too, right? You have to build whip because you might scrap some parts when you go from one process to the next, to the next, to the next. And all the parts you see here, they're all done complete in one operation, right? Left spindle, right spindle, completely done lights out, if you put a bar feeder or a robot, um, you get parts done complete in one machine. Yeah, one thing I think about when you say that is the old set it and forget it mentality yes. or the old whole uh, hiring your third shift or second shift to be fully automated. This, right. is, this is how we compete on a global level. This is how oh, we absolutely. make money and profitability. Yeah. This is how we reduce our overall scrap and consumption yes. as well as real estate in our facilities by combining. These yes. operations, this precision, it really goes all in. I'm not sure if you could tell or not, but I get excited about yes. this topic. No, absolutely. I mean, and, and we see the, the customers, how they benefit from from having these type of machines where, you know, one, one, of, one of our customers were making a specific part at six different operations, and it was taking them eight hours to set the job up. Eight hours, and they had to run two pieces. So at this, at, at this point, it doesn't matter what your cycle time per piece is, it really, it's all about change over time. So he bought one of these machines, a B-axis machine from Nakamura. He's able to do it in one setup only, and he sets up the machine in one hour instead of eight hours in six different pro six different machines. That almost sounds too, it's almost like you made up that story, I but not. I know you didn't because I've actually seen those customers as well with right. Nakamura and with you. Yeah, so now you think they were making money, making the part, on an eight hour changeover, six different operations. Imagine how much money they're making, making this part now with changeover in one hour and only one hour. It's just, it's all about, you know, profitability and making our customers more and more profitable so they can become more successful and buy more machines. This is how we become more profitable and this is how the machines so quickly pay for themselves yes. when we're thinking about the investments. And talking with Shogo-san, you know we're both here in Japan, he's got machines that are 44 years old that have never needed a repair yes. on the turret or the spindle. Combine that with the operations that are being yes. done and the downtime yes. or, or uptime of the machine spindle because of the downtime and reduction of the setup. It really, really is all inclusive. I'm gonna to have to ask for a raise myself based on some <laughs> of this profitability. But before I do, let's turn and look inside this machine and talk about what's going on with this Renishaw probe. Sergio, I gotta make this quick because this is really beautiful piece of work and I have to talk about it. What are we looking at right now in the machine? So this is a new function from Nakamura called smart tuning. So on a B-axis machine, the center rotation of that B-axis is extremely important especially when you're doing five axis work, angle work, you need to know exactly where that center rotation is. So what we have here is a Renishaw probe mounted to that spindle, and we're checking a gauge ball um, and finding the exactly location of that B axis. So anytime you move the machine, you have to redo, you have to find again the center rotation. 
if for some case, in some cases, you, if you bump that B axis, you're going to have to find again that center rotation. So if it's off by even two, three, four microns, that can make a difference in what your surface finish look like. Your corners, your fillers, uh, it makes a big difference. So by having the software again, it makes it easy for the operator, the setup person, to find that center rotation, basically automatically, as you can see here in the video. Just for fun, real quick, for the audience who's watching this and being fascinated just like I am, how was this done previously and how long did it take? Oh, it takes, it, it, could, it could take hours, hours to find this. If, you, if someone bumps the machine, you have, to get a, you have to get a master, right? Put into the spindle, indicators, and you have to measure uh, the position of the master, rotate around, it just, it takes hours to do this if you don't have the software and the Renaissance probe and the gauge ball. Perfect, perfect. And, That's exactly what I wanted to hear. You got a little bit more though, right? Yes, if I want to add, Tony, and everything really is about the software that they, that they develop and how easy it is to, to operate and to run. Um, every year they come up with three, four, five different functions, again, to help uh, us manufacturing, manufacturing be more efficient. Perfect. And in the famous words of Porky Pig, that's all, folks. <laughs>